Okay, so transform mode. Um, you can get to transform mode and you can transform any layer by going to edit trans or edit free transform. And there are a lot of different kinds of transforms that you can do. Uh, they're under this little transform menu. You can skew and rotate and flip and all these other things. But the kind of confusing thing is that it's a mode that you're in and you need to be in and out of it. So if you hit Command T, which is the hotkey to go into free transform mode, you're all welcome to make changes. Remember holding down Shift, highly advisable. Don't squish those kittens. Highly advisable uh, to hold down the Shift key, holding down the Alt key from the center. <laughs> We learned this stuff in Illustrator, so I'm pretty comfortable that you guys know it. The tricky thing about transform mode is that you have to commit the change. You can commit the change either by clicking this uh, checkbox at the top or by simply just hitting enter. And that kind of gets you out of transform mode. So it's a mode that you're either in or out. And once you're in transform mode, it tends to like not like you to do things until you've gone out of transform mode. Right? It may even ask you to place. And this time I, I, went, I selected a different tool. And you can transform anything. Uh, smart objects, anything really. Anything that's not locked. The background layer is locked. I couldn't do that. So just a quick transform mode. So uh, you know what actually I want? I'm going to kind of, I've got the wrong size of document. I don't want all that space. I'm going to press Command W to close that and not save it. This time I'm going to click and drag door.jpg just into the open area of Photoshop. Because I don't have a file, it opens up the JPEG itself. And just as a quick reminder, JPEGs do not hold layer data. They're an export format. That means I'm done with this project. I need to send it to someone on the web, probably. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. But I'm still going to keep my PSD file. Once your JPEG is open, let's see what, what we were supposed to do. Oh, oops, I opened the file too. Oh, I had the wrong, I was in the wrong part. Oops, sorry about that. I'm going to set these instructions off to the side. You can find those instructions on the public server. I might bring them back. But let's start with step one. So uh, document size, so I need to create a new custom brush. And this is one thing that you can do. Uh, right quick, you know what? Right quick, before we start the lab assignment, let's cover brushes right quick. Because getting used to brushes is, um, I'm going to start a new document just because I need something to kind of brush on. I'll press the B key to bring up my brush tool, and that should activate my brushes palette. If you don't see the brushes palette, you simply go to Window Brushes, Window Brush. I also have my brush presets palette open as well, although I tend not to use that one, honestly. Getting used to the brushes, and we kind of had a little bit of experience with this last time, it takes a little bit of time to get used to how the brush works because the default brush, and I'm just going to set this to the side for, this, for just a second, and I'm just going to paint with black. Remember, your brush is going to paint your foreground color Right now I have white, so I'm going to hit X to make uh, black my foreground color. Oh, that stupid thing likes to bounce around. It just annoys me. And if I click, we can kind of see, actually, you know what I'm going to do? And this is something that you should kind of do uh, as, as a routine with some of your tools, is whenever you select a tool, if you want to reset it to defaults, and sometimes, especially like the brush tool, can have some settings that kind of you don't really see, and you start brushing and you don't realize it, is you want to right click here and select reset tool, which will reset it back to the default. And in case you're wondering, the default, which you can find up here at the top right, is 13 pixels with a hardness of zero. Now the size and hardness are the important things. I'm going to hit the bracket keys to increase the size. So uh, open bracket and close bracket will decrease and increase the size and then click once. Now these two brush brush uh, clicks I should say um, they're with different hardnesses so we can really see what happened. 
But look at what happens with this brush. And this is kind of a, this is the hard thing I've always found about the brush tool, is that it extends beyond my little circle, right? Do you guys see that? The, if I have a very soft edge brush, it keeps going. Which can be really nice if you want a super, super soft edge. You kind of got to remember it's there. So there's not really like a way to see what's going to happen before you click. You just kind of click and then see that it's, it's kind of painting in. The other thing about hardness that's rather confusing is notice that if I make my brush smaller by hitting the, the close bracket keys, that, wait, this time it, it didn't. Can you guys see that it's really, really tiny? I'm sorry. But the little circle that my cursor is, now it doesn't. So what ends up happening, actually it kind of is a tiny bit. What ends up happening is, is that larger brushes get more of an edge and smaller brushes get a tinier edge. And I haven't changed my hardness setting at all. Go ahead and crank up your hardness to 100%. And let's say a brush size of about 100 pixels, somewhere around there, it doesn't have to be perfect. Go ahead and click and drag. And then I'm going to press the Z key to bring up the zoom tool, and then I'm going to click and drag and zoom in a little bit. Do you guys see what has happened as I clicked and dragged? Do you see those little bumps? What has happened is, is the brush tool essentially repeats itself repeatedly. That's how the brush tool works. I want to press Command minus to zoom out again. So as I kind of, let me pick a lot, much larger brush and this will become very evident. So you see how that there's um, like bumps in there? That's why I don't recommend that you set your hardness to 100%. Leave it at like 70 something. You know, you just kind of have to experiment. Maybe that, with this size brush, that's not even quite working. Oh, it didn't, didn't take it for some reason. Let's try 65. And you see how it smooths out those bumps? You can, like with the brushes palette, you can kind of play with some of these settings, specifically spacing. And you get kind of an example of what that spacing looks like at the bottom. You can kind of play with some of these settings to try and get rid of that thing, but you're never really going to get it rid of it completely. I kind of think about the brush tool a little bit like learning the pen tool in Illustrator. It doesn't really make much sense to what happens in the real world. I can't like show you a brush and be like, it works like this brush, because it kind of doesn't. Because like where you see that brush like hitting the page, it would be like you have like this mystery brush like painting around that brush as well. It doesn't really make work sense in the physical world. One of the things that you can do is you can actually create your own brush. By default, it starts out as a circle, but it can be anything, including almost like clip art. Let's go ahead and create our own brush by going back to Lab Assignment 8, which is the first part of brush, uh, Lab Assignment 8. We're going to kind of go over Part 1. So I'll close that. And which one? Let's see. I, okay, I need to create my own custom brush. The way that you create custom brushes is you start a new document. You always have to start a new document. You can't work inside of the one that you're already working on. I need to change my uh, width and height. Very, very important, guys. Always make sure that you're working with the right increments. It, there's always somebody that, that works in points or pixels and thinks they're in inches. And if you create a five, if you create an eight pixel by 11 pixel document, you're going to have a really hard time working inside of that document. There's not physically enough pixels there to really display anything. So be careful about what you are, make sure that you're selecting the right thing. So I'm going to select pixels, which will kind of put it into pixel mode. And then I'm going to set a width of 2000 and then hit the tab key and go to the next field and type in 2000 as well. And I'll go ahead and leave it at, if you don't see a resolution of, where did it go? Oh, I hate that thing. Um, I would, my mouse, why can't they get around the mouse? I'm just, oh, anyway, um, salt, okay, getting salty, calm me down. Uh, <laughs> resolution 300 if you don't see that. RGB if you don't see that. Okay, white, uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, go ahead and set it to 300. 300 is the preferred for, for print. Remember when I showed you uh, those pages? 
uh, and I still have those if you want to look at them. There's really not a huge difference between 300 and then stepping down to 266 and then 200. You really, it's hard to see a difference. There is a difference, but it's, it's, you could get down to 200 if you really wanted to. It's kind of getting into the realm of newsprint quality though. Um, oh, it says to do a resolution of 200. Oh, that's fine. 300, 200, doesn't matter. All right. Take your brush tool and hmm, I'll tell you what, let's do it slightly differently. Grab any of the, grab either the rectangular marquee tool or the elliptical marquee tool. Okay. Either one of those. And we're going to try to kind of create our own brush pattern thingy. And then I'm going to make a selection with one of those things. And I can simply just click and drag. And once I've made that selection, once you see the marching ants, I will henceforth probably refer to them as the marching ants. Now, depending on what your foreground and background color are, I'm going to go ahead and fill this with a color. Um, I'll tell you what, before I do that, actually, you know what? Scratch that. Grab the elliptical marquee tool. I'm sorry. Hit Command D to deselect. And there's also, incidentally, a select menu up here. And you have several commands that are very, very useful. Incidentally, the select inverse. I don't know how many times I've accidentally selected, like, the opposite of what I wanted. And then, like, you know, say I wanted the sky, but I accidentally selected the foreground in a photo. And I'd be like, well, shoot. And then I press, you know, I mask it out. But then suddenly the sky disappears. And that's the thing that I wanted. I could hit Command I on the mask, of course, but you could also, before you create the mask, you could simply invert your selection. But uh, lots of really good options in here in the select menu. We're going to cover some of these, but not all of them. But I want you to know, definitely a good menu. Whenever you're selecting, uh, uh, deselect, all, reselect. Um, it kind of has a little bit of a memory with your selections. So I'm going to grab the uh, elliptical marquee tool, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and remember the space bar will kind of let you drag it around. So somewhere in the middle, it doesn't have to be perfect. There is my brush. From here, I'm going to go back to that select menu and do something slightly different, which is the modify command to the selection. I'm going to do modify feather. Modify feather. Uh, yeah, modify feather. It should bring up this quick dialog box. I can feather the selection by a pixel value. How do you do the dialog box? Oh, uh, select. It's under select, modify feather. So once you have a selection, you'll have to see the marching ant. So you uh, just draw a circle with the with the elliptical marquee tool, and then modify feather. Um, you can set a radius value of what you want. I'm going to go ahead and set, this is a 2,000 pixel by 2,000 pixel document. I'm going to take a guess and say about 100 pixels. Did anybody see my selection change or the selection on your screen change? Did it change much, if at all? It didn't, right? Hmm. Let's go ahead and fill this with a color. Now, brushes can only see black and white and gray, right? They can't use color because they're kind of like little masks in themselves. So what I need to do is, depending on what your foreground and background colors are, if your background is black, then I'm going to hit, you're going to hit Command Backspace or Command Delete. I'm just going to call it the Backspace key. On Macs, they're technically, it's called the Delete key. But from henceforth, I'm just going to call it the backspace key. You guys know which key I'm talking about? OK. I, I, that irritates me why they would even rename that key arbitrarily, but whatever. They just have to be different. Um, so I'm going to hit, uh, but in my case, my foreground is black. So I need to fill with the foreground color, which is alt backspace. And we see what it has done. It has filled the selected area, but wait. It's tapering off on the edges. But this is very confusing. 
this is a really hard thing to understand. It's like, well, it's not hard to understand, but it's a really annoying thing about the interface inside of Photoshop. Think about it. You can partially select pixels. You don't have to select them 100%, and that's what we've done here. We've feathered the edges of our selection by using the feather command. And it feathers it both a little bit in and a little bit out. But the marching ants kind of split the difference. So even though I have, pic even though I have pixels that are partially selected here, it doesn't show me. And there isn't a way to see it unless I, use, unless, uh, I fill it with something or kind of do something else to, fill, uh, to see it. I'm going to go ahead and press Command D to deselect, just because I find the marching ants slightly annoying. And then from here, I'm going to go to Edit. And remember, we're creating a brush, and I'm going to define brush preset. So Edit, Define Brush Preset. And uh, if you want, you can go ahead and create whatever kind of brush you want. What's going to happen here is the black areas of the brush are going to become the brush, and the white areas are going to become not the brush, if that makes sense. Did I make sense there? I hope I did. So define brush preset. Let's go ahead and give it a name just because it will be helpful because there are a lot of brushes out there. Please name your brushes. Uh, let's say it's Mike's favorite brush. I don't know. Call it whatever you want, but just don't do the default. And as soon as I hit enter, you will notice that a new brush will appear in your brush palette. Now, whenever you create a new brush, you're going to create a new document. You don't need that document anymore. It's just a kind of a throwaway document. Although I think it asks you, yeah, when you create a new brush, you can just throw away this document. So the next step in lab assignment eight is they want you to, so you kind of create your own brush. And then you open wood.jpg. So again, I'm going to do it slightly differently just to show you a different way of doing it. I'm going to click wood.jpg and drag that to the Photoshop icon. Whenever you do this in Mac OS, if you drag a file to the application, it will try to open it in that application. And that's a Mac OS thing, not an Adobe thing, by the way. So I have wood.jpg. Now, we want to work. There's a very, very good reason. Uh, drag it. We, no, no, no. Don't drag it into the file because then it'll try to open it as part of that file. Drag it. Well, close the file first and then drag the wood.jpg to the Photoshop icon. If you drag it into the document, it will try to stay in that document. Does that make sense? It places it as a smart object in that document. Whereas if you drag it to the icon, it will open up that document. It will open up just the file, right? Photoshop does something that you will probably find kind of annoying at first, and it always locks your background layer. But again, we're always trying to find ways to work non-destructively. Now, we're going to take our brush, and we're going to brush on top of this, very similar to something I showed you two weeks ago. How do I do that? How do I brush on this without brushing on pixels? Because I could delete this. Incidentally, if you ever want to get rid of this lock icon, just double click it. It goes away. And then if I take my brush, I can brush all over this all every day, right? But what have I done? I have destroyed those pixels. There's a much, much better way to work. Do you guys remember this from two, maybe three weeks ago? Huh? Copy the background. I could copy the background. OK. There's a slightly better way if I'm just going to brush. Just make a new layer. There's a new blank layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette. And you guys see how that new blank layer has, um, it's completely transparent. It doesn't contain any pixels until I add pixels. So with your brush palette, select that brush. It'll be the last one on the list. You're not seeing your brush? Should be there. Wait, maybe mine didn't show up. Oh wait, maybe it's the first one. Huh. 
We're good to go. And if you don't see the brush palette, incidentally, just go to Window Brush if you're not seeing that. And you should see, if you click the very top option here, Brush Tip Shape, you should see a list of brushes. And your brush should be part of this list, but I'm not seeing the one that I created. I'm seeing soft round. And if you mouse over them, it will tell you their names. I might, um, huh, where did my brush go? I know it's in here. I know it's part of this list. Is this the first one? How strange. I know it's in here somewhere. It usually sticks to the, when you create new presets, it usually sticks it on the end, but it's not for some reason. Why didn't it? Huh. How odd. Well, maybe I'll just, well, let me just do that again right quick and double check myself. 2,000 by 2,000. And then I'm just going to do the steps again. Right, fast. Select and then go to. Oh, you know what? I might have forgotten something. Define brush preset. Let's see. Deselect. Test brush. Why? I don't know. Why did it not? It should be on this list. Maybe it's. Oh, it's in your brush presets, not in the, that's strange. It used to add it. Maybe that must have changed since the new. Okay, so now instead go to window brush presets, which is right under brush, of course. And then select, that should be the one that you created. Yeah, Mike's favorite brush, and then they should be at the end of the list. No, you don't need to. Once you create a brush preset, it saves it in the presets. Um, you might want to save it if you want to transfer it between computers, but you can you can save these presets and transfer the preset instead of the actual file. It's up to you which way you want to do it. I suppose saving the preset is better. Yeah, we have a brush. We have kind of a shape to our brush. It's gigantic. It's 2,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. Um, whenever you do create brushes, you want them a little bit bigger um, because brushes can actually pixelate, um, which is kind of weird to think about. But brushes can actually get really pixelated sometimes. So you got to be careful about. Um, you can even like go to websites and they'll have brushes for you. We got to be careful because they sort of because they're still pixels, they're still pixel based. That if you make your brush smaller and bigger, you can potentially create brush strokes that are very pixelated and look pretty awful. Um, you can even see a lot of those brush presets here, where they have things like tree leaves and things like that, stars and other things. I think you got you used a few of these with the diamond tutorial. Creating that diamond text. And then I'm going to make my brush kind of a bit smaller and kind of brush a pattern on here. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and press the delete key because I don't necessarily actually want that brush. I do want to show you guys something else. And this is an area of Photoshop. It's the brush palette. Sometimes this is referred to as the brush engine because there are a lot of really amazing things you can do with brushes. Photoshop will do a lot of work for you in creating certain things. In some sense, this works a little bit like the sprayer tool inside of Illustrator. It's not the same, but it works a little bit like it. And instead of having like different tools do those things and creating symbols that kind of cluster themselves in sort of a box, um, brushes are pixels and they're not really defined by anything. They're not really. And remember that 
the brush is essentially repeating a shape repeatedly, right? So whatever that shape is, as I click and drag, it's, not, it's going to just repeat that shape over and over and over again. But I can do a lot of different things. I'm gonna increase my spacing by quite a bit, and that looks pretty good, until I start to see some dots maybe. And this is a rough representation of that. And we can always just test it out real quick. Remember, this is this is on its own layer. So if you don't like what you if you don't like what you've created, just delete it and start a new layer. It's really not a big deal. And notice that as I click and drag around, I'm starting to kind of get polka dots. Okay, so that's that's one thing. I'll go ahead and press Command Z to undo that. Now I'm going to click the shape dynamics. And like my uh, hero, Bert Monroy, likes to say, play. This is an area where you can create a lot of really interesting effects with your brushes. In a similar way that you guys kind of figured out that using layer effects, like you're like, wow, you can really do this kind of stuff with layer effects? Yes, you can. And not only that, but you can do some really neat stuff here too. There's a lot of different settings. I'm not going to have time to cover all of them. Um, but especially in these top three, scattering, texturing, you can retexture brushes, which is really weird and interesting. You can add noise. A lot of these, um, the pose. Oh, the pose of the brush is, okay, so one thing I do need to explain about brushes is that, remember those Wacom tablets? I meant to kind of get one out, but I didn't bother. It's kind of hard to use it when I'm standing and talking because my hand does this and it doesn't work as well. One of the things that the Wacom tablets do, and they work really well inside of Photoshop, I usually like to use them when I'm masking or using the brush in any way. I tend to use brushes on masks. Is the fact that it will detect a lot of different things about what's going on with that pin. It's not just off and on. It also detects how hard I'm pressing. It detects the angle that I'm pressing at, which I don't know, like NASA developed those or what. That's amazing. And it will, and Photoshop will interpret that and change your brush based on that. So you can create a brush inside of Photoshop that works like a real brush in the world that will detect how much you've tilted your pen That's pretty amazing. We'll also detect pressure. And you can set those kinds of settings inside of Shape Dynamics. Do you see where it says Control Off? Pin Pressure. Pin Tilt. These variables are only available if you use a tablet. Now, you don't have to use a tablet. You may, of course, paint with a brick if you prefer. But that exists. There are lots of options. Play around with these. Add all of them. Just see what they do. So much fun. I've created some really neat stuff um, making these brush, like brush strokes. Um, creating little patterns. Um, stars. All kinds of stuff. Uh, you can do all kinds of really neat things with this. And don't forget that you can apply these to masks as well. You can apply any brush stroke to it. I mean, you can essentially, remember, if you create a mask, you can select it. Remember, uh, this is one thing that we kind of covered, and it's a very common uh, mistake to make. Honestly, it's very easy to make. I do it all the time by accident. Um, and that is, it's easy to not tell which you have selected. You have a layer mask, and then you have, here, I'm actually working on the layer itself or the layer mask. So be careful about which one you work on. I don't know how many times I've painted pixels onto an image destructively without realizing it. I usually just caress Command Z. It's not a big deal. But, oh my gosh, these, this pen tool stuff, uh, I mean, this brush tool stuff, are just amazing. And for lab assignment eight, please create your own brush. I know that we kind of created one with the marquee tool, but however you want to create black pixels, in that 2,000 pixel by 2,000 pixel document, you can. You can brush on that 2,000 pixel by 2,000 pixel document, and it doesn't even have to be, I guess 2,000 pixel, it's a pretty good, you want your brush um, 
when you do cr create brush presets, it is very important that that file be a box. It doesn't, brush presets get kind of weird when you have a 3000 pixel by 2000 pixel document, right? You want it to be a box when you create that brush preset. All right, play around with that and go ahead and create your own brushes and continue on that. I'm gonna go ahead and um, 